This is the Pixel Insight process tutorial for linear fit. You find linear fit in process, color calibration, and here it is. Linear fit is a really small process. As you can see, there's not a lot to do. And what it actually does, it levels the ground, it levels the brightness between different pictures. That is all. So before we actually go into the discussion, why and if you should do that and when, let's just show you how it works. It's very easy. So we have here an HA stacked image. I didn't do anything to these images at all. I just stacked them and here they are. So what we have to do is we have to open statistics and we look at the median of these two pictures. In the HA picture, I have a median of 7.887. If I now change it to 03, I have a median of 8.602. So the HA has the lower median. With that knowledge, I'll take HA because it has the lower median and throw it in the reference image. Now I take the triangle and throw it on the other exposures. So here it's only the O3, but if it would also be an S2, I would also do it with that one. And you have seen that the brightness changed. Obviously I can adjust that now with the auto stretch. They look similar. And from a how-to perspective, that's all I can tell you. But now comes the discussion, when should you use that and if you should use that. So it all depends how you actually get to your individual pictures and what your workflow is. So if you're actually shooting mono and you're creating different exposures of HA, O3, S2, you will have different brightnesses. And then it makes sense to use linear fit. The same here, I used AstroPixel processor to divide my color picture into an HA and an O3 exposure. And as you have seen, they have different brightnesses, so it makes sense to level it. On the other side, if you actually use channel extraction within PixInsight to divide your picture into different colors, then it makes no sense at all because PixInsight does it in a way that they are already leveled. So that's the first thing. But then the other thing is, it depends where you do your color combination. I recently saw a tutorial where someone actually did this linear fit. Then this person did the stretching individually and then the color combination. And then the linear fit is absolutely nonsensical because with the stretching, you change again the brightness of the pictures fundamentally. So anyway, through the stretching, you will have to ensure again that at the end, all these pictures have the same brightness again. And from what you're starting brightness wise, doesn't matter at all. So if your workflow is to stretch the exposures individually and then do the color combination, then you do not have to use linear fit. But if your workflow is to actually first combine the pictures and then do the stretching, then this is an absolutely great tool. Now, are we now already at the end? No, we're not. Because while a lot of people root for leveling the brightness here, there are some voices who actually have quite some weight who say this doesn't make any sense at all. Because you would afterwards anyway, with the stretching, with color masks, change that again. So why actually level something when you afterwards anyway change it again? So that's a little bit the notion here. And personally, I root with the people who say this makes sense and I wanna show you why. So you have seen now, I did now this level and what I will do now is a very simplistic color combination, HOO. So we take here the HA and here we take the HO and here we take also the HO. Okay, that is all. Give me a picture and here we have it. And let's look at it. Now you might like it or not, but hang in there. So what I did now here before actually I did this linear fit, I made a clone of the O3. So this has still another brightness level as this one. So this is now the method where we say, no, we don't do the linear fit. So for that, I will change here to the clone and here too. And again, give me a picture. Here we have it. Okay, now let's have a look. So this is with the leveling, this is without. Now, from an aesthetic point of view, you might immediately root for this one. And I think just from a first glance, I would do that too, looks much nicer. But the issue is this reflects in no way the reality. 
the blue is way too prominent. It is a simple fact that in our universe, the HA emissions are much stronger than the O3. And so while this at this stage, and this is not even background extracted, looks horrific, the strong red is accurate. And now there's two things to consider. First of all, in a time where we have SPCC, where we say PIX Insight is the most accurate when it comes to color calibration, it is simply a joke when on one side we go for this hyper exact color calibration with the stars, and then with the novelocity we do not care at all and we just make an absolute fantasy picture. And the other point is, we can still with this one. Do whatever we want. This is not stretched and we can still do color mask and obviously we can make the blue a little bit more prominent. But at least we start with something that at least halfway reflects the reality. We know what the reality is and then we purposefully deviate as much as we can stomach it away from it to make it look beautiful, to give it a meaningful way to show where the different emission nebulas are, and so on. So we still have these opportunities, but we start with something realistic, and we don't start with a complete fantasy land. So to sum it up, if in your workflow you do the color combination before the stretch, then please use the linear fit to start out with something real. And if you do the color combination, after the stretch, then you just have, while you're doing the stretch, have an eye on the median so that all the exposures actually have about the same median and with that the same brightness. Happy to hear your opinion. Do you agree with me? Do you have another opinion? Very interested. See you next time and clear skies.